unleashing a tempest of pent-up frustration. The usually composed Times employees found themselves engulfed in a fiery storm of anger on the set of Pawn Stars, in a dramatic clash of worlds. Buckle up and prepare for a tumultuous journey as we delve into the explosive clash that left Harrison and the Times employees locked money on useless items. Welcome to the storm that unfolded when the Times employees Harrison got furious on Pawn Stars. The best one had to be listed first today. This man named Randy walked into the store with a huge ass vending machine. He believes that his machine is from the 1940s. Candy? Yes, sir. You know who loves candy, right? This guy. <laughs> well, chum, we know your love for candies, but is this deal as sweet as them? This machine sure has chum's heart, but Randy doesn't even know if it works, and neither does he have the keys to it. Well, let us look into what chum thinks about it and whether he thinks it would be worth the cost. Just taking a look at it, I mean, it looks pretty rough shape. There is a lot of rust on it. It sure needs a good restoration, but Randy wants a thousand dollars for it. Man, it already needs so much work to be done. I personally don't think it's worth investing so much, but who am I to suggest? Oh, how the chum had been schooled by experience, a lesson etched deep into the fibers of his being. Scarred by past misjudgments and Rick's scoldings, he now approached each decision with newfound caution. But hold on to your seats, for the words that spilled from the expert's lips were nothing short of astonishing. Get ready to be astonished, for the expert's revelation is nothing short of extraordinary. Okay. Whoa. Oh boy. Right? The guts are missing. So what this needs... Man, it is empty inside. All the mechanisms are missing. The expert saved Chum's ass today on this one. The expert adds that in this condition, the machine is max 300 bucks. Whoa, that was a low blow for Randy, it seems. He cannot believe the price dropped from 1000 bucks to just 300 Up and running and painted, obviously. 4500 4500 Okay. Well, this machine is asking too much. Chum noticed it and got the bargain straight from $1,000 to $75, and they just shook hands on $100. Bucks. But a deal is a deal. Let's see how Chum restored it and made it a good sales machine for his own bars. Whoa! <laughs> Holy Chum Bar! <laughs> Check it out, right? That is freaking awesome! Whoa, the machine is brand new again. No one can even imagine how it was before. And I know you're thinking no one got furious here, but hey, the video doesn't end here. You see, Rick was not so happy about the sweet gift lying in the garage. Why are your candy bars in it? That's the gift it keeps on giving, Rick. That thing, can, you can sell it for $6,500 to take dollars off it every day for the rest of its life. Rick's fury reaches its boiling point as he directs his anger toward Chum. With intense frustration in his voice, he makes it clear that he's had enough. In a sharp and cutting tone, Rick declares that if anyone wants to get their hands on Chum's chocolate bar, they can simply take a stroll across the parking lot and purchase it directly from the store. No more concessions or accommodations. The message is clear. Rick has drawn a line in the sand, leaving Chum to face the consequences of his actions. It's a harsh ultimatum that hangs heavily in the air, leaving Chum to contemplate the future of their strained relationship. Will Chum take the opportunity to make amends, or will the rift between them widen further? Only time will tell how this explosive situation will unfold. Ah, the timeless dance of irritation between Chum and Rick, an intricate routine that never fails to provoke a symphony of exasperation. As a well-worn melody played on a perpetual loop, Chum's knack for pushing Rick's buttons has become a legendary saga of vexation and amusement. With each encounter, their interactions tread the line between exasperated sighs and affectionate eye rolls, a delicate balance that keeps the audience captivated. The sparks of frustration fly freely, igniting a wild dynamic that has become an integral part of the show's charm. So, dear observer, prepare yourself for yet another chapter in the saga of Chum and Rick's fierce relationship where irritation and amusement intertwine in a dance that never ceases to entertain. Did you know that Chum's not just passionate about candies, he is passionate about diving as well. You can't even imagine what he buys next. He goes to buy a sailboat. Yes, you heard it right, a full sailboat. Rick was unhappy about the candy machine. You can't even imagine how he's going to react to this deal. Give you that, um, minus a little bit of paint and you know a little glue and some elbow grease, I think it's in great condition. In the realm of high stakes negotiations, a pivotal moment emerged when Chumley laid his cards on the table, offering a seemingly irresistible deal for a remarkable boat priced at $7,000. But Chum couldn't agree on this price. It was too much. The air crackled with anticipation as the weight of the proposition hung in the balance, threatening to tip the scales of Rick's patience. It was a make-or-break moment that had the potential to send shockwaves through their long-standing relationship. The stakes were set, and the tension mounted like a pressure cooker nearing its boiling point. Could this be the tipping point that would send Rick over the edge, leading him to unleash his wrath upon Chum Lee? 
The suspense was palpable, and we are eagerly awaiting the outcome of this risky transaction. Chum made a really nice bargain and came to 3,800 as the closing price. The boat, I realized I was gonna need somewhere to park since it's such a beauty. It's a better place than right in front of the pawn shop. All right, start right there. Oh boy, get ready for the inevitable fireworks when Rick lays eyes on a massive boat about to be parked right in front of the pawn shop. You just know trouble's brewing. Rick's face turns crimson with anger as he witnesses the chaos ensuing in the parking lot. Shouting fills the air. Ropes are flailing about, and the situation is spiraling out of control. Now, it's up to you to decide how Rick will react. Will he burst out of the shop like a raging bull, ready to lay down the law and restore order? Or will he take a moment to cool down and approach the situation with a level head? Brace yourself for the dramatic clash that lies ahead. What insanity do you guys have going on? What's going on here? But hold on, there's a twist in this tale. Chum steps forward, determined to explain his actions and hopeful that Rick will actually commend him for his endeavors. With a mix of confidence and trepidation, Chum begins to share his motivations and the reasoning behind his seemingly chaotic actions. He lays it all out, hoping that Rick will see the brilliance behind his plan. What do you think? How will Rick respond? Will he give Chum the recognition and praise he desires, surprising everyone with his understanding and appreciation? Or will he continue to be infuriated, dismissing Chum's explanation as nothing more than an attempt to cover up his reckless behavior? Here comes a roller coaster of emotions as this captivating scene unfolds before your eyes. I need a spot to park your 27-foot sailboat that I just bought you. Oh. A look of profound disappointment washes over Rick's face his eyes conveying a mixture of frustration and exasperation. He can't help but feel let down by Chumley once again. With a raised voice, Rick unleashes his discontent, emphasizing the absurdity of the low price Chumley has set for the boat. An abiding remark, Rick suggests that if the boat is being sold at such a bargain, one can only imagine the true condition and quality of the vessel. He acknowledges the undeniable truth that a good boat worth its weight and value would never be sold at such a low cost. The disappointment in Rick's voice is palpable as he grapples with the reality of the situation and his frustration with Chumley's decision-making. It's a moment that highlights the clash of expectations and the unrelenting nature of their dynamic. Poor Corey gets dragged into it for no apparent reason. Supposed to be a manager, you handle this. We're not gonna have a boat in the parking lot. Put the boat somewhere. And where I'd like you to put it, I really can't say. Poor Chum, yet again, not appreciated for any efforts. As if the mounting list of Chum's blunders wasn't already enough to incite Rick's fury, an air of suspense fills the room as Chum finds himself teetering on the precipice of yet another foolish choice. Tension crackles in the atmosphere as we hold our breath, waiting to see if Chum will repeat his pattern of misguided decisions. The weight of anticipation hangs heavy, like a dark cloud looming overhead. In the midst of this suspenseful moment, Rick's anger simmers beneath the surface, ready to erupt like a volcano. The stakes are high, and the consequences of Chum's potential misstep could be dire. Prepare to have your mind blown. Have you ever heard of a street-legal pirate ship? No worries if you haven't, because it was a revelation for me too. Picture this, a captivating vessel that sails through the streets instead of the high seas. This audacious individual is actually selling a pirate ship that doesn't navigate water, but instead driven around during parades and events. The sheer novelty of this concept is enough to make your jaw drop. Can you imagine the spectacle of a fully decked out pirate ship roaming the streets, spreading swashbuckling cheer and captivating onlookers? It's an unconventional twist on the nautical adventure, where imagination takes flight on wheels instead of waves, a fascinating change that challenges traditional boundaries and sparks the imaginations of all who encounter it. For a ship, you can actually drive 50 miles an hour on the highway. This is awesome. In a moment of anticipation, Chum captures a picture of the pirate ship and eagerly sends it to Rick, seeking his seal of approval. It's no secret that Chum Lee's heart is set on acquiring this extraordinary vessel. However, Rick's response reveals a familiar pattern. He doesn't always share Chum's level of enthusiasm. Despite Chum Lee's unwavering excitement, Rick's support wavers, casting a shadow of doubt over Chum's aspirations. Nevertheless, amidst the uncertainty, Chum Lee embarks on an unforgettable adventure on the ship, immersing himself in a world of whimsy and joy. The pirate ship becomes a catalyst for moments of pure bliss as Chum Lee discovers a sense of freedom and exhilaration that he has never experienced before. It's a testament to the power of chasing dreams, even in the face of skepticism. Join Chum Lee as he embraces the sheer thrill of sailing on that ship, creating memories that will last a lifetime. If I can make a deal, Rick will think I'm the man. 
As the wind tussled Chumley's hair and the weather played its part, a symphony of elements converged to enhance his adoration for the float even further. Each gust of wind whispered its approval as if urging him to embrace the exhilaration that danced in the air. The perfect weather conditions seemed to align, creating an enchanting atmosphere that heightened his connection with the pirate ship. With every passing moment, Chum Lee's affection for the vessel grew as if it were infused with magical essence. In the midst of it all, Chum Lee savored the joy and freedom that enveloped him, cherishing the sensation of pure bliss as he sailed through the streets on the ship that had captured his heart. As Chum Lee eagerly awaits Rick's response, hoping for validation and support, his heart sinks when he reads the crushing words that appear on his screen. Rick's text delivers a blow that pierces Chum Lee's enthusiasm, leaving his spirit wounded and his dreams deflated. The message, like a dagger to the heart, shatters the joy and optimism Chum Lee had been clinging to. The heartbreaking reality sets in as he realizes that Rick's words don't align with his own deep-rooted passion for the pirate ship. It's a moment of profound disappointment as Chum Lee grapples with the stark contrast between his own excitement and Rick's lack of endorsement. Emotions swirl within him, hurt, confusion, and a tinge of resentment. Are you sure he's not going to buy it? He doesn't have any money on him. But he's an idiot. Amidst the tangled web of desires and concerns, Corey possesses a keen understanding of Chum Lee's nature. He recognizes that once the request to abstain is made, Chum Lee is unlikely to proceed with the purchase. In this aspect, Rick's fears find resonance in Corey's assessment. The rational part of their minds acknowledges the validity of Rick's concerns. Even if Chum Lee were to succumb to impulsive desires and make a foolish decision, the stark truth remains. The price of the pirate ship far surpasses his financial means. It looms above his allowance like an insurmountable hurdle, a barrier that cannot be breached without dire consequences. The clash between longing and practicality creates a dilemma that Chum Lee must confront head on. Will he heed the warnings and let go of the unattainable dream? Or will he risk it all in pursuit of his heart's desire? The outcome hangs precariously in the balance as Chum Lee grapples with the weight of responsibility and the allure of the forbidden. The owner wanted $250,000 for it. Man, that is a little too much. The last bargain he could agree on was $190,000, man. That is still so much money. Chum Lee was so sure that Rick would want to get it, until he checks his phone. The Do not buy the float. That was Rick, my boss. The man had been driving Chum Lee around all of the efforts and explaining it. And all for what, man? Just to get rejected on a text message? Whatever. Oh, sorry, man. Man, I really feel so bad for Chum Lee. Everyone gives an attitude to my boy here, and he just takes it all. Well, enough of Chum Lee. Sometimes even Rick makes a mistake, and the great Harrison is not at all happy about this one. A captivating scene unfolds as Bill strides into the store, his presence immediately catching the attention of the Pawn Stars crew. In his possession, he carries a Wells Fargo strongbox, an intriguing artifact that exudes a sense of mystery and historical significance. As if that weren't enough, he adds to the spectacle by unveiling antique balls and chains, further piquing the curiosity of everyone present. Bill, confident in his offering, sets the price at a hefty $2,000, a sum that raises eyebrows and sets the stage for a fascinating negotiation. So we got a Wells Fargo strong box and some antique ball and chain. Okay, you do have a The anticipation builds as the Pawn Stars team contemplates the value and potential of this unique collection. Will they be able to strike a favorable deal that satisfies both Bill's expectations and their own interests? With his vast knowledge and years of experience, Rick's expertise comes to the forefront as he steps into the bargaining arena. Determined to navigate the deal without relying on external advice, confident in his abilities, he draws upon his extensive understanding of historical artifacts and market trends to assess the true value of Bill's offering. Rick's sharp mind is like a well-honed tool dissecting the details and uncovering the hidden gems within the collection. As the negotiation unfolds, his eloquence and persuasive arguments come alive, revealing a masterful display of wit and intellect. Rick's knowledge becomes a formidable weapon, allowing him to strike a delicate balance between fair pricing and maximizing the potential of the transaction. It's a testament to his experience and a showcase of his ability to thrive in the world of bargaining, showcasing the power of a sharp mind in the pursuit of a favorable deal. Electrically welded. See how these have arcs from an arc welder? Sure, okay. Okay, and my other big concern? As Rick utters the phrase other concern, a flicker of suspicion dances in his eyes, indicating that there may be more at play than just the handcuffs. His discerning gaze scrutinizes the items within the Wells Fargo strongbox, sensing something amiss. What could it be? A forged antique? A replica masquerading as a genuine artifact? 
The anticipation mounts, and the negotiation takes an unexpected turn as Rick dives deeper into his investigation. Determined to unveil the secrets concealed within the box, Rick further adds that the box might actually be real, but the stuff in it is absolutely not. So that made him a little concerned about it, to which the man explains that the stuff was not in the box. He just kept it all in there. You always see a Wells Fargo strong box in an old Hollywood Western. So this will definitely get a lot of interest from collectors. The bargain started at $1,200, but hey, we know Rick. He is damn good at bargains. He finally sealed the deal at 450. But obviously, we need a piece of expert advice over here. Mark, the man with all his knowledge and his beard, is called back to the store. Have you already bought this? That sounds bad. Mark further tells Rick the bad news. It was a complete fake. Damn it, Rick. Looks like Harrisons get pissed off on this show. But hey, another day, another lesson to be learned, right? So these were the times employees Harrison got furious on Pawn Stars. Which one do you think was the worst decision made today? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you liked our content, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Catch you later, guys.